That's your British Empire. And had eagles' wings. What came out of the British Empire but the United States of America? What's the symbol of the U.S.? By the eagle. So now we have these two governments that come up here at the end time. I don't you people know that the United States is just a little over 200 years old. Lord have mercy going back again to that 1776. And then just before that, the great growing of the British Empire. That might go back a bit further than that, maybe back uh, somewhere around the Reformation when God began the spiritual Reformation under Martin Luther. He began the natural government raising up of the British government to lion and then her eagle, her eagle's wings, which became the United States of America. I'm reading from chapter 7, verse 4 of the book of Daniel. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth, and they stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. Now, you are listening to the Overcomer Ministry radio broadcast from Walterboro, South Carolina. For our most current contact information, please visit www.overcomerministry.org. There you will find our mailing address, radio schedule, and phone numbers where you can listen to the broadcast at any time on your phone. Also, Make sure to check out the Overcomer podcast. Our prayer line is 843-701-5053. 843-701-5053. Things of the eagle were plucked, and it turned into a man. Listen to what the United States has done. After becoming a very uh, powerful nation that broke off from the UK, and it mounted up and became a great, great nation, exalted higher than even the UK or the British government, its wings were plucked. And it became like a man. Everyone knows the United States has claimed this humanitarian attitude, its human approach to mankind, considering ourselves in this country the most civilized people that's ever lived on the face of the earth we became known for our humanity and man prospered under the u.s now in the midst of all this he says in verse 5 and behold another beast remember now the first beast out of it the british empire came the second nation the united states now we find a second beast, a second government that starts to influence the rest of the world, the whole of the world. Look into it. Like to a bear. Well, the Russian bear, it became very strong. And its combined power was to take charge of masses of countries and people and it raised itself up on one side. Now what did it do? It raised itself up on the side of anti-God. It became a nation of a political process that we come to know as communism. And they were strong in their anti-God, no-God social philosophy. They became very strong, the Russian-Soviet pair. It had three ribs in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it. And they said thus unto it, Arise and devour much flesh. What did it do? As the Soviet Union came into power and communism became sweeping throughout the world, they killed and butchered and destroyed millions. I forget, what, 30 to 35 million in the Soviet Union alone, and an equal amount in the in China, and God only knows how many millions were butchered under the butchery of communism worldwide, and even to this day, as its child, the socialistic theology goes forward. 
Now, it, uh, it was strong on one side, and it ate up humanity left and right. Verse number six, and this is where we are right now. After this, I beheld, and lo, another, another what? Another beast, another government, like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. Notice this now. This government includes the eagle government, and the British government, and even the bear, all combined, and yet a different application. The beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. Four heads. The strength of the world government is politics, a social structure, an economic structure, and last but not least, the backing of religions worldwide. It has four heads. Verse number seven. After this I saw in the night vision, and behold, a fourth beast. That's the one that's coming into being now, my friend. If you would go back to the book of Revelation, you would find in the 13th chapter of the book of Revelation, where he said, I saw a beast rise up out of the sea. Isn't that something? Just like the book of Daniel. I saw him strove upon the great sea, and the four great beasts came up from the sea. Now this beast that John saw in chapter 13 of the book of Revelation, he said, I saw a beast rise up out of the sea. Now that spiritual event took place a few years ago when Mr. George Bush Sr. was in office as President of the United States. Hey, Mary Nassau, this is Sister Libby calling up for prayer. Thank God that he's giving me the strength to press in that press on because I was under attack so severely today, but I bless him that I can call on him, I can confess my sins, and then I can just lean on him and trust him. Thank you for your prayers, and I will pray for you and the saints all over the world, that the Lord binds us together with cords that cannot be broken, and that we re he returns to save his people, Israel. There it is. Oh, bless you, brother. Mary Doss, I just want to say that uh, I'm very, I'm going to see you on 62 a.m. in the New York area, and I will have a ticket down to you. I just don't know uh, if I'm welcome because I'm a smoker. So please call me back if you can. Thank you. God bless you, saints. This is Sister Diane Johnson in Finland, Minnesota. Pushing on 5950, and that's doing good this morning. And I'll be with you for prayer hour and listening to the day. And I do ask you to continue prayers for us. And I do pray for all the saints around the world. May the Lord help us all just to stand strong and not waver in our faith. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Come as my prayer. And Lord bless you all. And Maranatha. This is Charlotte, Brother Stell. I want you to pray for me. Uh, I seem like it's hard for me you know, to, to get well. And I just need praying for my right leg. He, need healing in my right ankle. That be sweating on me. Hi. This is Sister Danelle Carey calling in to say I'm missing this morning. and. Uh, such a blessing and the singing this morning was so good and it just blessed my soul and, and I've uh, been really busy and trying to help a friend who had severe problems with her son and uh, it's an sort of ongoing thing but he can't she doesn't want him to live with her anymore because it just doesn't work out and at all. He has severe mental illness and won't take his medicine and so it's just been really difficult for her and 
I tried to be some help to her. Um, I know that in my own family, there's been situations like that, but hers is really a um, sad deal. And so I'm really praying for her. And please pray for her name is Melanie. Her son's name is John. And he's really a nice fellow. He's not already for Anyway, uh, I appreciate y'all so much and everything. And, and please pray for me, too, that I'll just keep on walking in the faith and the straight and narrow and uh, listening and praying for y'all, too. Appreciate you. and. Maranatha, praise the Lord. He's coming very quickly, I believe. Thank you. Bye-bye. Praise the Lord, saints. This is Sister Lizzie calling in for prayer as I press in and thanking God for keeping me, keeping my mind to stand on Him. Inspiration as we press in, as we press in. And as we love on each other as he walked up to. For we truly do need each other in this time. Shalom the Maranatha. Good morning. I need prayer. Uh, I was praying with the Holy Spirit and some of it got on me. But I was praying this evening and trying to keep on me like the box. All my muscles asking up. My name is Mary Villiers. Thank you. Bless you, saints of God. This is Sister Sherry. I've just been calling, and I wanted to uh, ask for prayer today as I've been having a cough and a little bit of difficulty breathing, and um, my husband's kind of got a cold as well, and so I wanted to ask uh, saints of God if y'all would keep us in prayer. I'd appreciate it. And uh, I was listening earlier, and I heard... Uh, Brother Joe call in and Brother Rich and Brother Paul and I wanted them to know that I also pray for my brothers as well as my sisters and uh, thankful for all of you and those that call in. Um, bless the Lord. Aaron F. And Mr. Gorbachev, the ex-butcher of the KGB, who is as big a terrorist as the world has ever seen, they both heads of their beast governments, the bear and the eagle, they ended up going to visit the Pope of Rome, who was going to bring together all the religions of the world because if seven women will take hold of one man, seven world religions are going to come under the dominant leadership of the Pope of Rome. And they're going to say to the Pope, and to the, that religious system, take away our illegitimacy. They say, we, we will maintain our own houses of worship. We will pay our own bills. All we ask you to do, Mr. Pope, is to give us legitimacy and tell us we have a right to worship and serve the God and the, and, and the, the manner in which we do it. And we will pay homage to you as a great religious leader. And of course, Every one of you knows that that's exactly what the Pope and the Catholic Church is doing now, as they are embracing every religion, all seven of them, throughout the world, are coming under the auspices of authority by the Vatican. Now, John said, remember John was on the Isle of Patmos, he was looking west towards uh, the rock of the Baltic, towards the western part of the Mediterranean Sea, and he said, I saw a beast rise up out of the sea having seven heads. Isn't that something? What do they call these seven economic powers today? The, um, the meaning of the seven, we just see it so many times, Dave. The seven uh, nations who have control of the economics of the world, and ten horns. Of course, they added a few others to them and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his crowns the name of blasphemy. And the beast, here it is now, 
And this I beheld in low, I mean from Daniel chapter 7, verse 6. After this I beheld, and lo, another like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. A charge was given to it. John said in Revelation 13, 2, And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, his feet, listen to this, as the feet of the bear, his mouth as the mouth of a lion. Notice all three of these previous governments are involved in this one, in this one. The lion, the UK, the uh, feet of a bear, ladies and gentlemen, the Russians, and the mouth of the mouth of a lion, which was the United States, which speaks profoundly for all the English-speaking British-type people throughout the world. And it says, they got their power from the dragon, from Satan, the secret brotherhood, or what have you. They got their power from the dragon and gave him his power and his seat and his great authority. I saw one of these heads as it were wounded to death. Now that one head that was wounded is the head of the nation of Germany. Few people can remember that in both of our two previous world wars, they were both started by Germany. Both of them. As we came to the ending of the Second World War, when it seems like the Allies were comprised of Russia, England, U.S., and France. They comprised the four Allied nations. And they were marching on to Germany now, up through Normandy, on through in heaven for Berlin. And the final demise of the German forces was in its making. Mr. General Eisenhower was in charge of the Allied command. Mr. Stalin, believe it or not, atheistic, communistic, the Germans had beat them bad. I mean, the Germans had beat them bad. And yet, Mr. Stalin was still moving now back down towards Germany because as Hitler was fighting the Russians on the Russian front. The attack from the Allies came from the back. He had to pull back from the Russian front to defend his western front. And when he did, the Russians started to come back into the war. Instead of marching into uh, Berlin and just wiping out Hitler, General Eisenhower held up on the day of conquest until Stalin could move up and all four of the Allied powers could march into Berlin together, making them a conquering group. So therefore, when we finally defeated Germany, as they tell us, and uh, Berlin fell, there were four powers, four nations, who were involved. And so when they split up the occupational forces of Germany, they split it up into four sectors. The French sector, the British sector, the United States sector, and would you believe it? The Soviet sector. Craig, you know what happened, don't you? It wasn't long to Stalin split from the Western Allies, built the, the Berlin Wall, and took and wounded this powerful head, Germany. It's unique now, isn't it? that under Mr. Gorbachev, when he and Mr. Bush went to see the Pope of Rome, Mr. Gorbachev goes back, brings about a coup that brought down the Soviet Union and out of it came the Russian bear. Mr. Bush comes back and gets us into a fiasco that he called a move towards the new world order. I was reading an article the other day about that particular thing. What's at stake here, Mr. Bush said. In December 31st, 1990, he said, 
in the, is the new world order. What's at stake here is whether we can have disputes peacefully resolved in the future by a reinvigorated United Nations. In J January, he spoke, the Gulf crisis has to do with a new world order. Wow. In uh, August of 1991, he said, a new world order is not a fact. It is an aspiration and an opportunity. I hope history will record that the Gulf crisis was the crucibility of the new world order. Mr. Bush, ladies and gentlemen, began to push the plans that have been in place for a long time to bring about a new world order. Just the other night, and by the way, this is Wednesday, October the 10th, Mr. Tony Blair said, we are going to order a new world. Wow, we're going to play checkers and chess and move around nations and governments and people until we come up with a, a world order that is going to bring about peace and uh, we're going to have a one world government for the new world order. So, what happened after Mr. Gorbachev brought down the Soviet Union and the Russian bear came back into play, the next the thing we know that Germany was reunited. The head was healed. Now, do you understand right now as I'm talking to you that just the other day, the United States, which was a part of NATO, and we know they rearranged NATO now, has now asked for NATO to send planes over to the United States to help guard our security. Planes that we actually gave to them, AWACS. And of course, everyone knows that the thrust and the power behind the NATO forces is Germany. Germany. I told you all along, Germany's going to rise again and play a major part in the final Third World War and the entire world government that's going to be set up and ruled from the international bankers, from your invisible brotherhood, from the powers that be upon the face of the earth. Well, September the 11th, I was reading my scriptures. I kept talking about the river Euphrates. You remember the river Euphrates? The river Euphrates flows through Iraq from Turkey down to the Persian Gulf. It's in that area of the world that after September the 11th, every single eye has been upon that area of the world. It is unique when you know that the scriptures speak deliberately of the river Euphrates. Six angels sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. Loose the four angels which are bound, there's four demon spirits, these are fallen angels, they are destructive, they are going to cause havoc, and now God says, loose them, it's time for them to come out throughout all the world. Listen to what happens. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. Wow! They started that slaying on September the 11th, and it looks like we are moving dramatically to see masses of people annihilated upon the face of the earth. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand, and I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire, and of jacinth and brimstone. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. By these three was the third part of men killed. By these three, the fire, the brimstone, the war, the... Uh, chemical warfare, the biological warfare, the nuclear warfare, the conventional warfare, was a third of humanity killed. 
You know, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to find out again whether the book that we talk about called the Bible is true. It was overwhelmingly coming to me what, where, how in the scripture do we find an event so carefully being perpetuated before our very eyes. Remember, in Daniel chapter 8, he says, Behold, I will make thee know what shall be in the last end of the indignation. For at the time appointed, the end shall be. Wow. Well, as I begin to zero in on the river Euphrates, and I caught what God was doing here, I picked up the book of Daniel. For God said to Daniel, go thy way, Daniel. It's written in the book, but it is sealed up until the time of the end. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached into all the world as a witness to all nations, and then shall the end come. For well over two years now, this prophet of God has been speaking to the whole world and to the nations of the world every single day. My voice is heard like no other one man in all the world. Ladies and gentlemen, fulfilling the scripture in Matthew 24, the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached, then shall the end come. Well, we're in the time of the end, Daniel. And so I took my Bible and I went back and I was amazed as I begin to read chapter 8. It was in the book of chapter 8 that I saw another river. And the river is called Ulaia. U dash L A I. Because of the river Euphrates, I was captivated. I called some of my brothers together and I said, locate for me, please, where or if there is upon the earth today a river, Ulila. Daniel said, I saw in a vision, it came to pass when I saw that I was at Shushan in the palace, which is in the province of Elam. I saw in a vision and I was by the river Ulila. Well, the brothers got together, got uh, the research team out, and they come up with the Eulala River. It's a tributary, if I can use that expression, uh, a part of the source of water that flows into the river Euphrates. It's up in Turkey, and it flows east and west, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, but it is a river in the same area of the world that we're talking about, Afghanistan, Pakistan, uh, Kalastan, and er Persia, and Iraq, where all the world is now focused on. Who would think that the Bible would talk about the war on terrorism centering in the very area of the world that we are now all reading about every single day in your newspapers and on your news. What did Daniel see that was going to take place at the end time? In verse number 3 of chapter 8 of the book of Daniel, he said, I lifted up my eyes and I saw and behold, there stood before the river a ram, which had two horns, and the two horns were high, and one was higher than the other, and the higher came up last. I saw the ram pushing westward, northward, southward, so that no beast might stand before him. Neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand, but he did according to his will and became great. The ram, 
All at once the Spirit of God made me realize that the ram represented a religion that has become predominant and is now being focused on throughout the world. The religion is the Muslims. You know, they're actually going to have a holiday, a holy day coming up in the month of November called Ramadan. Ram, Ram, Ram. In that area of the world, the Muslims have taken over most of the political of operations in countries like Iraq, Saudi Arabia, uh, Kuwait, Iran, Turkey, Afghanistan, Pakistan. These are strongholds of the Muslims. Another thing that's happened in the last several years is that they have moved westward, the Muslim religion. They have moved southward, and they have moved northward until uh, they are now in every country in the world. It is unique if you could just grasp what I'm saying. You know, when these religious systems become uh, so powerful and so unified throughout the world, they become a, a viable uh, item to take a look at. The Jewish people, which represents a Jewish religion, is one and only people who have been scattered in every part of the world. There are Jews in every nation in the world. In the spiritual realm, the Christians pattern after the Jews, and there are Christians of every nation, tongue, tribe, and creed. Here in the end time now, we have another religion that comes on the scene actually claiming to serve the same God as the Jews and the same God as the Christians claiming to be the sons of Abraham. And uh, that's the background of the children of faith, the, the Jewish religion, and now the Mohammeds and Muslims declare that they are children of Abraham. Of course, they are after the flesh, and they come through Ishmael, the servant girl's son. The Jewish line comes from Jacob, and the Christians come from Abraham through Christ. Praise God forever. Now, here comes these Muslims. All at once, they become a world power. Do you know there are more Muslims than there are Chinese? There are more Muslims than there are Catholics? There are more Muslims than any other one people united in such a strong bond as a religious conviction that literally charts their life. They are committed, they are a dedicated people, and we watched as a segment of these men boarded these planes, flew these planes into the Twin Towers, taking their lives and the lives of hundreds and thousands of others. Is this the first time we've heard of those of the Muslim faith that have given uh, their lives in suicide attempts? We have been focusing on Israel for months and months now, ladies and gentlemen, and we've been hearing of how they'll walk in these bombers and blow themselves up in their cars or even with the bombs on their person. The Muslims are a religious people who are dedicated with a profoundness to actually kill and reject anyone who will not convert to their faith. So here we find the ram. The ram is pushing northward, southward, and east or westward. And no beast could stand before them. No government could stop them. They took over in Iran. They take they control in Saudi Arabia. They control in Iraq. They, they, they took over in Pakistan. 
they run the government in those countries, and they literally not only have two horns, like the Bible says, they have two horns, they get control of the governments. Most of the governments are dictatorial type, and the people are compelled then to observe and obey Muslim law. Even when we sent our boys into Saudi Arabia, they weren't allowed to bring Bibles. You're not allowed to practice any other religion in a Muslim country except being a Muslim. And they kill and they butcher even their own people. We've heard so many accounts about it. So we find this ram, this ram which has pushed westward, northward and southward now rising up until it become a world of recognition throughout the world that's what it says now in verse number four i saw the ram pushing westward and northward and southward so that no beast or any government might stand before him neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand he did according to his will and became great. Are you going to deny today that the Muslim faith has now become a great religious faction that is now rivaling even Christianity and Hinduism and even the political process of the world? Ladies and gentlemen, this is Brother Stair. I am talking about Daniel chapter 8 and I just got to the part here of the ram. The next part brings up the goat. And I, I, I tell you, it is just absolutely amazing when you realize what is going on. He said, as I was considering, behold, a he goat came up from the west on the face of the whole earth. When Mr. Bush declared his war on terrorism, we became the nation of the United States with this conglomeration of, of nations to go against the ram, we became that cult. Are you listening to me? And one of the things Mr. Bush did almost immediately was create an agency to bring the cooperative countries together in their fight of this war on terrorism. And he called the agency global opposition against terrorism G O A T GOAT can you believe that global opposition against terrorism and it says this this goat this goat he came from the west everyone knows the United States is considered from the west he came from the west on the face of the whole earth. He compassed and involved the whole earth and touched not the ground. And the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. His military power, a war. We went to war against the ram in Afghanistan, Pakistan. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the truth and that noble horn that's given us the ability and the strength and the will to go against this ram is our military might that's the way the united states has become great you know we're a nation who has lived by the bomb we will die by the bomb we have built up others Hey, do you know we actually helped Saddam Hussein to develop the anthrax? Do you know that our country literally did that? Some of you should know it. And when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, that the righteousness of God might be fulfilled. And all of this was done that the scriptures might be fulfilled. And when you see Jerusalem compassed about with armies, know you therefore that the desolation thereof 
is near. These be the days of vengeance when all things written shall be fulfilled. And he will send Jesus, whom the heavens must receive, until the restoration or the fulfillment of all scriptures that was spoken of by the holy prophets since the world began. Scriptures fulfilled. The word of God being fulfilled. Even so shall it be in the end of the world. He will send forth his reapers, and they will gather first the tares into bundles to be burnt. And then he will send forth laborers who will gather the wheat into his garner. Even so shall it be in the end of the world. When shall these things be? What shall be the sign of thy coming? And the end of the world. There will no sign be given unto this generation except the sign by Jonah. Like a sign given to a generation profoundly at this time. And as he said these things unto them, the scribes and the Pharisees began to urge him vehemently and to provoke him to speak of many things, laying wait for him and seeking to catch something out of his mouth that they might accuse him. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scatters. And when the people were gathered thick together, he began to say, This is an evil generation. They seek a sign, and there shall no sign be given it but the sign of Jonas the prophet. For as Jonas was a sign unto the Ninevites, so shall also the Son of Man be to this generation. So he came near where I stood. Daniel chapter 8, verse 17. And when he came, I was afraid. I fell upon my face. He said unto me, Understand, O son of man, for at the time of the end shall be the vision. For at the time of the end. And he said, Behold, I will make thee know what shall be in the last end of the indignation. For at the time appointed, the end shall be. In the book of Daniel, chapter 8, we were talking to you about the, the ram and the he-goat. The other broadcast I talked about in Derby, in referring to the ram, the ram represents the nations, but mostly the religion of Muslim. Verse number 3. I lifted up mine eyes, and I saw, and behold, there stood before the river a ram. Now this river that this ram stood in front of is right there near Afghanistan, Pakistan, Iraq, Iran, near the Mediterranean, near the river Euphrates, near the Persian Gulf, where the whole world is now focused on. Isn't it amazing how we've had this nation of Afghanistan and Pakistan and how we have made a move against all of these nations of Arab descent whose predominant religion is Muslim? He said this ram. Remember now the Muslim city called Ram Ramadan and holy days called Ramadan. The ram is remarkable. Even the wording is there. The ram had two horns. The two horns were high, but one was higher than the other. The horns here represent the government. First, they take over the governments, and no one can stand before them. Then they implement the second horn, which rises higher, their religion. I saw the ram pushed westward, northward, and southward. 
in the last 10 to 20 years we watched from obscurity become the, the Muslim religion and nations become a predominant force. They have grown so rapidly in their push westward, northward, and southward until today there are more Muslims than there are Catholics, more Muslims than there are Chinese, more Muslims than there are Christians. Over 1,500,000 uh, recorded Muslims now. And all at once, they make a move. And it says, I saw the ram pushing westward and northward, southward. So that no beast, no government, the word beast in the Bible stands for governments or kingdoms. No beast might stand before him. Neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand. He did according to his will, and he became great. So great that the whole world is now focused on nations and governments and people whose horn of religion has now risen higher than their political domination. Daniel says in verse number 5 of chapter 8 of Daniel, as I was considering, looking at this e event, this, this phenomenon that has come to bear upon the world, I beheld a he-goat came from the west on the face of the whole earth and touched not the ground. And the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. He had a very single intent, a very purposeful reason for rising up out of the West. On September 11th, 2001, the Muslim uh, Arabic-backed seemingly terrorists, which whether we want to say it had to do with the Arabs or not, or the Muslims or not, their claim is that they are Arabs and they are Muslims and that what they did was an act of their God. It is remarkable if you understood scripture at all. The Bible said that the time will come when people will kill you and say they're doing God's service. Ladies and gentlemen, we're watching this kind of scenario unfold and have been watching it for a long time. We watched this thing take place in the Middle East there in Jerusalem as the Arabs in their suicide bombing missions against Israel say they're serving the God of Ishmael and Abraham and then the retaliation of Israel against them and both declaring that God is on their side. It is unique in this confrontation between the goat the United States and all of her compelled allies under the global opposition against terrorism, which is the conglomeration of nations that Mr. Bush has brought together in his ramming against the ram, in his going against the Muslims and the Arabs and the Taliban. If you don't know that the Taliban's strength is that they are the government of the Afghanistan and their strength is in their religious enforcement, then you are totally blind, ladies and gentlemen. You are totally blind. And here we watch Mr. Bush make a war against terrorism and zeroes right in on that area of the world so predominant it's almost unbelievable. Terrorism has taken place in many other countries, and much of the terrorists have lived in other countries. And yet we zero in on this area that is predominantly Pakistanian, Afghanistanians, and all the stands, and their strength is their Muslim faith. Mr. Bush, ladies and gentlemen, citizens of the world, saints of the Most High God, I was flabbergasted 
as it was called to my attention that Mr. Bush actually stood up and called uh, the world to attention and demanded that all stand on their side saying if you're not with us you're against us and we are on the side of right oh we become a praying nation we went back to reading the Bible and we went back to invoking God on this war against the terrorist and of course on the other side the Muslims are doing the same thing and they're telling they're killing the people in America and around the world and warning others that their God is going to give them victory so here we have both sides declaring that they're doing God's service or bidding God and God said the time will come they will say that they're doing the will of God and the service of God while they kill you Mr. Bush, ladies and gentlemen, President of the United States, in his alliance of getting all the nations to line up with him in his war against terrorism, he actually, literally, factually named the coalition the Global Operation Against or Opposition Against Terrorism. The Global Opposition Against Terrorism. G-O-A-T G-O-A-T GOAT And Daniel Way back In pre Determined time before Christ said As I was considering Looking at this phenomenon Of the Muslim Of the ram Becoming great Pushing and enforcing And taking over It all began With the, the Shah of Iran Being deposed And a Muslim government Took charge of Iran And immediately We started having problems In Iraq And now Saudi Arabia And now Pakistan Ladies and gentlemen Gentlemen, the Muslim predominant governments, the ram pushing eastward, westward, southward, becoming great, and who seemingly could stand before them? Now a confrontation has come, and he said, I saw a he goat came from the west. Is there anybody listening to me today that does not know that we are considered the west? The United States is considered the west? And where did this goat come from? From the West. What did it do? It compassed its influence on the faith of the whole earth. Or don't you think the rest of the world pays attention to the things that happen to America, by America, with America? Don't you realize that America is not loved as much as you think and much of us is hated? Why, even to get the palace, uh, the Pakistani leaders uh, to back us in this war against Afghanistan, we have to pay them one billion dollars in aid and open up, and they're going to keep right on going on with their Muslim faith and, and their war and their rivalry against India. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, we're watching the goat. What did the goat do? He touched not the ground. Do you understand that as we started to a ram or come against a ram, we didn't come against him with ground forces? Our ground forces cannot match this ram on the ground. As we heard the other day, uh, they tried to go in with ground troops and the Taliban, who, who are these rams? Oh, they know the terrain. They know the mountain. They know the territory. They know how to live in that area. We don't know how to live or die or fight. In that area and so we don't touch the ground we come in with our air power our rockets is it unique and he touched not the ground and the goat had a notable horn between his eyes he is noted for his tremendous military might and power and it is devastating and the Bible says and he came to the ram the goat did that had two horns in power politically and religiously which I seen standing before the river and ran into him in the fury of his power ladies and gentlemen if you remember I started this segment of broadcasting by talking about scripture being fulfilled 
I told you time and time again that many things that you witness with this prophet of God is you witness scriptures being fulfilled. You know that God said, Behold, I will send my messenger before my face. The Lord God will do nothing without first revealing the secret for that time period or event to his servant, the prophet. What a revelation that God has burned in my soul here about this ram and the goat. We haven't fully exhausted the complete fullness of it or the end of it. But we shall continue and as time goes on, God will quicken it to us, I am sure. He said, I will send my messenger. So I have told you over and over again, you are watching and hearing and witnessing that scripture being fulfilled. You know, there is a inevitable scripture that is soon to be fulfilled upon the face of the earth. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I go to prepare a place for you, I go to my Father, but if I go, I will come again. And that is what this ministry is all about. A messenger, the sign that we are in the end of the age. And the soon return of the Lord Jesus Christ is about to burst upon the scene at this hour. Scriptures are being fulfilled. Behold, saith God, the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. Well, just the other day, this message reached so profoundly even into the Afghanistan and Pakistan area that I have received mail from people. I know it's hard for us in America to comprehend, but in all the countries of the world, in every place, God has His people of every nation, tongue, tribe, and creed. He has given to the chosen, the remnant, the word of reconciliation. Let's go back to our story about the ram and the goat. The goat, verse number six. He came to the ram that had two horns, which I seen standing before the river. Now the river is mentioned up there in verse number two. It's spelled U-L-A-I. I would say pronounce it you liar. Some might otherwise. But we went and searched it out. It is right there in Turkey, just north of the river Euphrates. Something has taken place scripturally in that time zone, my friends. You need to pay attention and recognize that the word of God is being fulfilled and scripture is coming to pass right in your very hearing. The sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. Loose the four angels, the demonic angels, the fallen angels that are bound, that have been confined and held by the word of God until a time. Loose them from where? the river Euphrates, right there in the area of the world that we are now focusing on, and they are being loosed to do what? And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year. Can you understand that? They were kept there in bondage, in reserve, by the word of God for a day, an hour, a week, a time such as now you are living in to do what? To bring about what, saith the Lord? But to slay the third part of men. To slay? Chapter 16. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came, and tempting, desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said unto them, When it is evening, ye say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, It will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites! Ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the signs of the times? A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. He left and departed. And when his disciples were to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have taken no bread, which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, 
Why reason ye among yourselves, because ye have brought no bread? Do ye not yet understand, neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand, and how many baskets ye have? Neither the seven loaves of the four thousand, and how many baskets ye have? How is it? that I spake it not to you concerning bread, that ye should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Then understood they, had them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. When Jesus came into the midst of Caesarea Philippi, asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, Jeremiah, so one of the prophets. He said, And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against him. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be found in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem, and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. <laughs>